Hey guys, what's happening? So the uh, Trudone's back. Trudone, Vive Dino. It's like a uh, Verone 2.4, like a commercial version of a Verone 2.4. Um, like, a, like a fully assembled kit. Uh, normally there's actually sides on it and I don't know, they keep the beds off of it. But uh, we're going to convert this to Clipper. So in my first video with this thing, um, there was a failed board and it originally was like a duet clone board running wrap wrap firmware. Um, but the drivers had failed and it was sort of like a proprietary driver so it was you know, cheaper just to go with the Octopus, you know, the SKR Octopus board here. And um, so it's already wired in and uh, so we're going to convert this to Clipper. And uh, I already have some stuff already. We already bought the stuff. Um, so I got a Raspberry Pi 4 here, 8 gig of RAM, 7 inch touchscreen, and I designed a new mount for it. Um, so I'm going to be taking this old, uh, you know, Big Tree Tech uh, TFT 35 off and replace it with my uh, mount for the uh, 7 inch touchscreen. So I mean, I'll, I'll put all this stuff on Thingiverse if you guys want it, if you have this printer. Um, because originally I designed this adapter here to adapt this thing. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that, and, but, uh, yeah, I, I think most of these Verones actually had Clipper on them. I don't know if they ever ran Marlin, but I did actually, it took me a long time to custom make the firmware for Marlin. You know, with the full leveling, like the Zeke entry leveling, you know, all that stuff, and it actually worked great. Um, yeah, some of the wires, uh, got loose, so we had to fix that, but, um, yeah, these things are actually hard to crimp, man, these little th thin wires, they break easy. So, all right, so we're also going to be adding a camera to it. And I'm going to find a way or design a part to somehow put an accelerometer in here. So I'm going to have the accelerometer run up to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to have to fish a wire up through the cable chain. And I'll permanently mount it somewhere, maybe here or someplace, where whoever want to run the script again to run the accelerometer, they can do that. I mean, you can actually, you can temporarily mount the accelerometer, but... I don't know, so I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet, but, um... Alright, so I'm going to take this stuff off. I'm going to start pulling the old, uh, Marlin, uh, display off. You can tell it's Marlin because you have these old-style, uh, ribbon cables. It's a combination of, it's a weird display. It's a color touch screen and an old-style Marlin connector. But, it has the TFT connector and the old-school Marlin, the serial interface, SPI. Alright, so a couple things to consider how I'm going to do the, um, so there's two different ways you can control Marlin. I don't know if the Octopus actually has it, but I'm sure it's, it's the Octopus is a gnarly board. It's insane amount of inputs and outputs. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can connect Clipper to your uh, uh, SKR board or like any sort of like a Marlin board. Is you can either go obviously through the USB port, you know, USB to USB. Or you can go straight on the actual uh, GPI, GPIO pins and run a wire straight into an SPI port, if it supports it. Uh, not all boards support the SPI interface. The SKR Mini actually has it, and a couple others. So, that might be a cleaner look. So I might go that route. Um, these boards typically don't have enough power to power, especially a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, with that LCD touchscreen, I mean that draws a lot of power. So what I got is I got a buck converter. So I'm going to run 24 volts off this power supply into a buck converter, and then five volts to power the Raspberry Pi. Um, okay, so I need to figure out what is what, so I can take out this old display. And yeah, this is a nice board though. These octopuses. All right, we'll get started. Take this off. So, I actually made these extra long, so I might trim these to length because I need to make sure that the LCD, when it comes here, um, I have clearance here for the, um, yeah, I might have to lower that because I need to have clearance, there's, there's going to be a sliding door right there, so I need to bring that, I don't know, I might need to bring the whole mount down. So might need to redesign that. All right, so I got the buck herber installed. And use that little trim part right there, and that will adjust the output voltage. 
So I typically like to go about 5.1 volt. Uh, that's usually enough to get rid of the power warning. Uh, because it has the LCD, the 7 inch LCD, it draws more power. So to feed it, I'm going to probably break off four wires off this cable. So I'm going to have red positive, and the two will go to uh, RXTX on the motherboard here. And that will feed into the GPI, GPIO pins, and then it's will be power. Alright, here's a close look. So I'm actually using the SPI pins right here. So instead of having to use like the USB connector here, um, I can still use the USB connector to go back to the back over here. Um, so it's going to go straight to the motherboard, and this will fish out the front here, and this will go to the LCD up here, directed to the uh, GPIO, GPIO pins. Um, and that's a buck converter. I already have it set to 5.14 volts. So once you hook up your device, it's kind of the voltage will drop down just a little bit. So it should be in a good range once we connect the devices. So once that's done, let's go hook that up. All right, some progress here. Um, I'm actually just making videos every couple days as I work on stuff. I design and parts. This is the, I had to do a couple different revisions. Um, you know, have a clear thing here clear the uh, door. So next I'm designing a webcam mount back here, 2020 rail. That's really the only, because it needs to move with the gantry, so. Um, so I'm going to get it back there. It's a C270, and then I'm going to fish the USB cable come up here to the front. And then, I don't know if this was designed for it or not, but this little spot under the BL touch right here, well, this accelerometer I'm going to put in here, this took me a permanent mount. Seems like it, the holes are lined up perfectly right here. I don't know if it was designed for that or what. You know, see those holes right there? They're almost like the exact hole spacing for the accelerometer. So if I can find a way to get it up here and fish it up nice and clean through here and have it go all the way through the cable chain back to the Raspberry Pi, so it's going to be permanently on, so you can run it wherever you want to run it. Um, Alright, yeah, this is probably one of my more advanced installs um, for home 3D printers. Um, you know, with the accelerometer and just the fact that what makes this printer more difficult than your typical 3D printer, I don't even know if I said it, it's because you have four Z motors. You know, and then you have to be able to actually like, level the gantry. Uh, so besides bed leveling, right, Mesh, meshing the, the bed, you need to level the gantry, so it's added complexity. All right, so I'm finishing up the accelerometer. Put some little plastic spacers in there. Um, yeah, nice and hidden away. Well, I, mean, I was going to put them on the bottom side, but then I didn't want like plastic debris to get into it, you know? So I figured it'd be safer up here. And it should have clearance. Double check. Yep. And then... Um, Went down to Marvac, my local electronics store in Costa Mesa. And uh, I put them in an eight pin together. That's how they're gonna be. I, I need to count now where they're at, but it should be something like this. Um, somewhere like a pin like that or something like that. Yeah, now I can just, it just pop it in. In case I ever lose my pin, I just, just pop the whole thing in there. All right, so the 12, the red, the 3.3 .3 volt is 12 spaces on the inside here. So one, two, three, all up to 12. That number is number 12. Coming from the USB side. So in case I ever lose a pin, I can go back to this video and figure out where I put this thing. And that's the 5 volt for the screen, 5 volt, ground, uh, RXTX. All right, this video is, at least this part of the video is for the owner, Richard. So in case we ever lose, you know, the sequence again, that's X, that's Y, that's Z, Z, left front, Z2, left rear, um, Z3, right rear, Z4, front right, and that's the extruder. That is the uh, TX, and that's the RX for the Raspberry Pi. That's the buck converter. That's the five, uh, I have it set to 5.1 volt to power the Raspberry Pi 4 and the screen. Positive, negative. 
and uh, that's it. I mean, then we have the thermistors, the bed. These right here are the thermistors, hot heated bed, the extruder. These are the two end stops. This should be X, and that's Y. These are the fans right here. And the 12 volt fan right here. This is the one for the uh, MOSFETs, it cools the MOSFETs right here. That's the, the rest of them are 24 volt fans. And that is the solid state relay, and that's control right here. Right here, actually, the output. The output of the hot bed activates the solid state relay. Because the bed is actually 110 AC heated bed. All right. All right, so X, Y, home X, Y works fine. Um, I gotta actually enable the uh, accelerometer and the clipper. And then I'll start doing some tests. And then once I'm, you know, the camera's back there, if you can see, camera faces this way. So I had to get in a position where it was underneath the carriage, but I'm not gonna interfere with it. I just made it a mount. I'll put a lot of stuff in my thing over page, uh, the Raspberry Pi 7 touchscreen mount here. I'll put that up there. Um, so yeah, everything I, I usually, for all the, the printers I work on, the parts I design, I just upload a Thingiverse. So if you guys have the same printer, you can print them, whatever you got to do with them. Okay, so I got everything dialed in. We're not familiar with these uh, clippers with the quad gantry. Um, it's in their uh, home. And quad gantry level. It goes back and it tries to level the motors. Because if you ever touch the gantry, it wants to go down on one side. Especially when you, like, you don't have the motors active. Like there's no power in the motors. So it goes back and it'll actually raise and lower the motor <clears throat> depending on where you're at. Like if one side is lower, it will actually only bring up one motor. So like right now I've already done this, so it's perfectly straight. Um, and notice, it, so I actually have a max retry of a five and a tolerance of 0, uh, 0 0.03 millimeter, which is a little higher than the default because when I had the default, which is really picky, um, it would actually air out. I mean, so I right now have a max uh, retry five times. So if it can't get it in five tries around the bed, then it airs out. So it's really hard to get the default tolerance, especially on a printer this big. Um, but yeah, height, height maps work. Everything looks good. Camera, actually what's funny is that the camera focus back there it actually looks pretty good. So I don't think I need to print out a camera focus ring. I mean, maybe, I mean, but when it's right here, I mean, it focuses pretty good. And surprisingly, it's like the perfect angle, too. It's slightly tilted down, so even when I get in its default position, I can see the bed. You know, it's not under the bed, which is cool. Alright, so just got to do a test print, and this thing will be ready for pickup. Yeah, I got the first test print gun. I'm going to do a calibration cube. Dial in the Z offset. Z offset was about one negative one point six. Yeah, it's a lot more complicated than these uh, little basic printers like the Ender three or like the Pus i three right there or the Mini right there. Um. So I'm gonna do a test print, and then I might go back and do a. Cause I already did like a calibration just to test the accelerometer last night, but I wanted to uh, maybe do a print with uh, before and after the accelerometer. All right, so I'm done with this printer. Um, I mean, look at the quality of this thing at 120. Look at that. You can see that in the sunlight. Look at that. Like no ghosting. This thing was moving too. Look at that. Virtually no ghosting. It's incredible. Still got to work at the stop right there on the top. So I, I, my, my NG code is not correct. Um, that's not really a quality print issue, but that's incredible how good that prints. I think it's like a matte PLA. Or is it like a overture matte PLA? So it's not carbon fiber PLA. Um, but that's incredible. Nice printer. I mean, pretty complicated. I mean, it's a complicated printer. It's uh, probably one of the most complicated FDM printers I work, I've worked on. Um, like I said, just because of the 4Z motors, but um, alright, cool. Clipper conversion. So yeah.